I like collecting things. I have a pretty excessive collection of Pokemon cards among other things, and generally speaking, the more rare something is, the more appealing it is to a collector like me. Over the years, Pokemon have really perfected the formula for luring the money right out of our pockets in exchange for various items featuring our favourite characters. Except mine, because no one likes it. There is, however, one line of exclusive items that I don't see talked about too often, but they've always caught my eye, which would be the various Pokemon-themed consoles released throughout the years. And there are... a lot. So today I thought it would be fun to take a look at every single limited edition Pokemon console ever made. I'm gonna go in order, starting with the very first special Pokemon handheld console ever produced, being this yellow Game Boy Light. Uh, what the hecky is a Game Boy Light? That's a pretty good question, because before this video, I didn't actually know. Lessons with Lucy, I think. Well, I think I had heard of it before, but my memory is like a Goldeen's. Anyway, the Game Boy Light is a variant of the Game Boy Pocket line that was only ever released in Japan. The only real difference is that it takes different batteries and has this extra brightness option, hence the name Light. This is much like the bright SP of the Game Boy Advance line, also known as the SP AGS 101. I'm not sure what the reasons were for it not being released outside Japan, but if I had to guess I'd say it was probably due to the looming release of the Game Boy Color. So either they didn't have enough time to market it in the US, or for fear of taking attention away from the Game Boy Color. This special handheld was only made available in Tokyo's Pokemon Center, and features Pikachu as well as silhouettes of Bulbasaur, Horsey, and Lapras. While the original Game Boy line received only one special console, that was all about to change with the Game Boy Color. The most common limited edition Game Boy Color console you'll see would be this design that was bundled along with a copy of Pokemon Yellow. This design was also adapted and sold with a transparent green shell in Taiwan only, and Hong Kong with an exclusive clear blue shell. The Pikachu and Pichu model also uses the same colour scheme as the special yellow console, but of course features Pikachu and Pichu instead. This design was also reused for a special edition gold and silver Game Boy Color, which changes colour depending on the angle. Also tying in with Generation 2 was this console featuring the Gen 2 starters which was sold in Japanese Pokemon centers. The last exclusive Game Boy Color was also only in Japanese Pokemon centers and was made to mark the third anniversary for Pokemon, having an orange and blue shell featuring the Kanto starters and Pikachu. Onto the Game Boy Advance line, which is honestly my favourite on the whole. Starting with the original GBA, the first systems will be these three, which are stylized to represent and coincide with the release of the fourth Pokemon movie, Pokemon Crystal, and Pokemon Heroes. The first two are just coloured similarly to Celebi and Suicune and have silhouettes of Pikachu and Pichu, but the third one has this gorgeous colour scheme and actual silhouettes of the relevant Pokemon. Another limited edition model would be this golden one with silhouettes of Pikachu and Pichu. It was made to commemorate the opening of the New York Pokemon Center. Uh, oh wait, never mind, it's Nintendo World now. <laughs> Nintendo New York. They went on to sell this system within Japan too, which completely defeated the purpose, but... Pokemon! Yeah! Apparently the winners of the Pokemon 10th anniversary journey across America were given unique diamond encrusted Game Boy Advances as prizes, but for the life of me I can't find an actual picture of them anywhere. If these ever surfaced then they would likely be worth a lot of money. I also found this picture of a white Game Boy Advance with a similar design to the ones mentioned earlier, but I can't find any reliable information other than the picture, so I don't know whether or not it's a reproduction. Just thought I'd acknowledge it in case somehow it is an official model model so I don't look like a total dunce. Now, the Game Boy Advance SP line is where they get even better. They're very subtle designs, but they're some of my favourites of the entire Nintendo handheld lineup. The same year as Ruby and Sapphire's release outside Japan, these gorgeous SPs featuring Groudon and Kyogre were released. They feature a vibrant red or blue colour scheme, with very subtle silhouettes of the mascot legendaries on the case and on the inside of the system. Even more subtle is the Torchic edition released the next year, which is orange in colour and has a very faint outline of Torchic on the case. Similarly themed consoles were also released to coincide with Fire Red, Leaf Green and Emerald, which all look stunning. The final Pokemon SP release was this Pikachu themed one, which I would definitely say is the most common one that I see people use. The Game Boy Advance line does have more than one Pokemon system though, being the Pikachu Game Boy Advance Micro. Yep, the third Game Boy Advance revision they decided to release a year after the DS. On a side note, it's pretty funny that even though this system sold extremely poorly for Nintendo standards, nowadays Game Boy Advance Micro sell for more than the originals and the SPs. The Pokemon edition's cost is anything but Micro, at several hundred pounds or dollars or whatever currency you use. Time for the DS line. The original DS line only had two limited Pokemon systems. The first and the most valuable would be the Mew edition which was sold only in Japanese Pokemon centers. The other system is a Pokepark themed one. As the name implies, it was sold in the Japanese Pokepark. Surprisingly enough, this console actually did receive a release across the US. In Walmart, for some reason. 
Um, let's release a Pokepog DS in the US! Hey, we, we got a problem. What is it? There is no Pokepog in the US. Um, uh, um, I don't know, just stick it in Walmart! The DS Lite's lineup is mostly systems released through Japan's Pokemon Daisuke Club. The first is this I Love Pikachu model, which has images of Pikachu making various expressions. Another four came a few years later, featuring a Redon logo with the Sinnoh starters, and Pikachu, again. These consoles are extremely rare, with only 40 of each being given out. Released with Diamond and Pearl is this awesome Dialga and Palkia themed DS Lite. This one is pretty tasty, in my opinion, because the silhouettes actually glitter as you turn the DS around. I don't have one to show you, so um, I guess just imagine that part in your head. This yellow DS Lite with a cute little Pika on the lid was also a difficult one to get. In Japan, you had to enter a lottery to even be able to buy it. The last DS Lite is this awesome Giratina themed one released to coincide with Platinum. This is another awkward one only available through the Pokemon Daisuke Club, and even in Europe, it was only available through Club Nintendo. It rarely pops up online, but when it does, it has a large price tag attached to it. Unfortunately, Generation 5 doesn't really have a massively impressive array of limited consoles to show. With black and white came a pair of DSi consoles with pictures of the cover legendaries Reshiram and Zekrom. But oh uh, ho ho, they learned from that in Gen 6. They went crazy with 3DSs. Well, most of them were only available in Japan. The ones we got were the red and blue ones featuring the X and Y legendaries, as well as this one featuring Pikachu because... Pikachu. But oh boy! Japan gets this premium gold edition 3DS, a black Charizard edition because... pandering? And an Eevee one? I are you kidding me? Come on, you're just trying to hurt me. But we're nowhere near done with the 3DS yet. The next one I'm going to talk about is this beautiful design featuring Mega Charizard. I'm going to be real with you. This one was actually really difficult to find info on, but I did my best. This was a prize for something called the Dragon King Tournament, which was held in Japan in 2014. A lot of the sources that I've looked at have said that there's only one console in existence, but this image suggests otherwise, so I think that there's two. I can't find out much information about this tournament either, but it may have been for both the video games and the TCG, with a system being given out to the winner of each section. Regardless, this system is one of the rarest Nintendo consoles of all time. Two special systems were also made in extremely small quantities for the game Pokemon Battle Troze. Trozai? There's a black one which was available through a Koro Koro contest with only 5 units made, whereas the white one had only 4, with 2 each being given out by Pokemon Daisuke Club and Get TV contests. This trio of XL consoles with the same artwork were distributed at football matches in Japan, with the only difference other than the colour of the system being the logo of the respective team on the back. The number of consoles given out at each game depended on the number of goals scored by the home side. I'm not too into football myself though. Lizzie, They're giving out exclusive Pokemon 3DSs at this football game! Huh, what? I, I love football! A black one of the same design was released through raffles in Benny's restaurants in Japan, with only 10 ever being given out. With the release of Oras came these beautiful Primal Groudon and Kyogre XLs. They were given out through a GameStop Megastop promotion, where if you bought a Pokemon item, you'd receive a code to enter the draw to win the consoles, among other prizes. There was 25 each, for a combined total of 50 of these consoles made, making them extremely rare. And that just about brings us up to speed with Sun and Moon. Unlike the previous two generations, Sun and Moon released only one console featuring the cover legendaries, and then one featuring Pikachu, because... Pikachu. Then there's the first proper special edition 2DS, featuring... Pikachu, and the Alola starters. I say the first proper one, because there actually were three special consoles sold with a virtual console release of Red, Blue, and Yellow. They weren't specifically Pokemon themed, but I still think they're worth a mention. There was also a green one, but obviously since green was never released outside of Japan, they didn't release a themed console outside there either. The new Nintendo 3DS also has the feature of removable faceplates, which I think are also worth a mention. There are some really cool ones too, like these Primal Groudon and Kyogre ones, which are actually made of a velvety material. There's another Aura themed one, as well as Pikachu, Super Mystery Dungeon, 20th Anniversary, as well as Charizard and Blastoise plates. There's also a group of special consoles given out to people who entered VGC tournaments. From what I know of, there are three. The first being this orange DS Lite from 2008, then this blue DSi from 2009, and then this DSi XL from 2010. It goes without saying that these are insanely rare. 
This is also the part where I mention home consoles! The Nintendo 64 had four special consoles which all look pretty similar. Blue, orange, light blue which was Japan only, and a special Pokemaniac one for Europe and Australia only. There were also two special GameCubes, one for Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, and one for Pokemon Channel. There were also some special decals with an XD theme released, and for some final random stuff. There's a Pokemon Mini which had three themed units designed after Chikorita, Wooper, and Smoochum. And a special Pokemon Game Boy printer was also a thing too. And a Pikachu Sega Pico. If you want to know more about this console, then check out the links in the description or the end screen or something. but I think that's it for Pokemon themed consoles. It's safe to say that no one's ever going to have a complete collection of limited edition consoles, but even one of these beauties would be a gem in anyone's collection. Something I do want to say is that if you want to collect these consoles, then do be careful when purchasing because there are fakes floating around, so be sure to check it out as thoroughly as you can before buying. There's also a good chance that you may have seen a design not featured in this video. There are actually a lot of really talented artists out there that will make completely custom consoles, which is just mind blowing. A quick Google search will show you just how many amazing artists there are out there. But yeah, tell me what you think of this video. If you like it enough, then maybe I could have some mega project where I research every single limited console ever made in general. That would be one long video. But anyway, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you have any suggestions for top 10s or 20 lists, then please do leave them in the comments down below. My Swiss is also there if you aren't following it for whatever reason. I still have cat pictures. A lot of you have actually been having a blast sending me Psyduck pictures for my Licky Dip series, so join the craze! But anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!